Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this chance to be your people again in this place. We keep coming back because there's something here that we have found that we need and that we want and that we need to share with others. But we come here to experience it firsthand. We're grateful for the opportunity to hear your word and to let it sink into our hearts and lives. We are grateful for the ways in which our joys can be shared by others. And we are especially grateful for the ways in which our hurts and our pain and our loss can be shouldered by others. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have shared in this moment what is in their hearts, sharing it before you and before one another, one another, trusting that you will hear and trusting that we will respond. Help us find the right words and the right gestures and the right acts in the days ahead. For those whom we know, who we see here on a regular basis, for those one step removed, the families and circles of friends, and for those whom we will never see, but who are your children in the world, near and far, we ask you to be present with us and them in this hour, and then in all the hours that we are given, that the lonely might find companionship, the sick might find healing, those who've lost their way might be led home, and so that all those who need human love but see it in short supply might at the very least begin a new stage of their lives by experiencing your love and your mercy. And now in the silence of our hearts, we put before you even deeper hurts or deeper pain or maybe deeper hope, but still too personal to name aloud. Hear us now in the silence of our hearts. For all the ways you've been grateful, graceful and grateful for us over time, O oh God, we bring before you now our open hearts and open minds that you might open our lives to new possibilities, even as we ask your continued companionship on our journey. Whatever the twists and turns, whatever the hills and valleys, whatever the starts and stops, whatever the detours that we fear will never end, and whatever the new openings that present themselves beyond our imagining. Be present with us. Walk by our side. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's offer our gifts for the work of God's church.
please be seated. I invite you to join me now in the litany of communion. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you. We are the product of your creativity, made to be like you. And when we rebelled against you and denied our true selves, you stepped in our flesh and our reality and submitted to the cross so that we could find our way home. And now in gratitude, we join in the love song of creation for all eternity. Jesus died. Jesus came alive again. Jesus is coming back. We remember how all things were made new. On the night before he died, Jesus took the loaf of bread, and after blessing it and breaking it, he gave it to his friends. Remember me when you eat. This is my body, given for all. And when supper was finished, he took the cup, and after blessing it, he gave it to his friends. Remember me whenever you drink. This is my blood shed for all. With thanksgiving we eat and drink. With joy we remember. And with Christ's inclusive love, we gather together around his table. Amen. And as we come forward as individuals, we do so first by making ourselves one community, by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll receive communion today by intention. Please come down the center aisle. There'll be two stations here at the front, and then return to your seats by the side aisles. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion. All are welcome at God's table. And we use grape juice so that all may feel safe and secure in coming to this table for this meal. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. <laughs>
Having been nourished once again by Christ's holy meal, let us pass to one another the peace of Christ. Since we're four minutes early, I want to take 30 seconds to introduce the final hymn. Uh, Fanny Crosby wrote a great many hymns in the 19th century, and some of them have a very sentimental ring now, and some of them have a kind of hope that maybe we've lost, and some of them, well, but here's a gem. But Fanny Crosby was blind, and she used to spend most of her time in New York City evangelizing and holding revival meetings and preaching, and usually somewhere about the middle of the evening, she'd say, I have to go to the Bowery now and be with my boys. Because then, blind, she went and wandered among people that nobody wanted to see or smell or deal with every night. Got to go be with some of my boys. So let's stand and sing this old hymn and see how it goes.
love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with you this day and even forevermore. Amen.